enlightenment of mahakarsha enlightenment is the process of inner flower and inness of each seeker differs from that of the others it is very difficult to generalize how enlightenment may happen to someone else therefore it is important to know the way enlightenment happened to different seekers before they became masters mahakashyap was one of buddha's disciple he was a philosopher thinker and a great scholar of his time he met buddha on the bank of the river he asked the questions what is the relevance of these scriptures because you do not talk about god and things like these buddha asked mahakashyap in response a question he pointed towards the river that was flowing on the side and they met on the bank of that river buddha said if someone wants to cross over to the river what are the ways and means mahakashyap found that this question as a response was too lame but he had to respond he said there are three ways first if you know the depth of the river and it is not deep instead it is shallow you can walk through second if it is deep and you know swimming you can swim through the river to reach to the other shore and the last if you find there is a boat and the river is wide enough you can take a boat ride and reach to the other shore now buddha said if someone does not want to follow any of these techniques instead you want to chant his mantras do his prayers continue his rituals staying on this bank in an expectation that these rituals will take him to the other side rituals are also doing and taking a boat ride or swimming or walking through the river is also doing but there is a vast difference between the two rituals and the scriptural injunctions help you to some extent they are like the road maps but if you hold the road map in your hand it will not take you to the destination but erroneously people consider road maps as the ultimate techniques there is a vast difference between road map and a technique road map is there to help you and the technique is to finally execute that process now the enlightenment of mahakashyap mahakashyap is the epitome of enlightenment his enlightenment is unique in many ways buddha had many enlightened ones around him yet he felt something special for this one known as mahakashyap certainly there is something special in him so the key is to be given to a master who has not only become enlightened but has one desire is still left and that desire is to help others to become enlightened this desire is not troubled in becoming enlightened but with still one attachment or one desire one can help the others suppose if someone attains to his phd and decides not to teach what is the use of that phd the purpose is you learn something you by way of the profession you help the others in that process but in the world for that you are getting the rewards in the monetary form but in spirituality nothing like that happens so in case of mahakashyap only one string 
one desire was left. There were other enlightened ones as well, but the key could not be given to them. It had to be given to Mahakasya because he had an inner desire to help because of his past karmas, how he stumbled life after life in search of the light, but he did not find. And now that he has found, he remembers the struggle that he had to go through and that he relates that the similar struggle many will have to go through in life and after. So he decided that once he becomes enlightened, he is going to help the others. He could become a Tirthankar, he could become a perfect master, and he did well. Buddha had many enlightened ones around him, but the key cannot be given to any such person who can become a master in his own right, because the key is to be delivered on and on. I give it to you, you pass it on to others. That is known as the golden chain of the Sufi masters. Hazrat Baki Bulla handed over this key to Hazrat Mujaddid Ali Sani Razila Talaunu. Hazrat Mujaddid Ali Sani Razila Talaunu found Khawaja uh, Muhammad Masum Razila Talaunu to be the most competent one and the key was given to him. There were other Khalifas also, but the key was given to Hazrat Fazal Muhammad Masum. Hazrat Fazal Muhammad Masum gave to his son Hazrat Sheikh Saifuddin, not because he was his son, instead he was capable of transferring it onto the others and carrying on the work. The key was given to him. Hazrat Sheikh Saifuddin gave it not to his son. But Hazrat Nur Muhammad Badaini Razila Talaunu. And thus the golden chain of the masters, Nakshbandi masters, came into existence. The key is to be given to the most competent one who has the capability not only to commun communicate, transfer, to help the others along the path. Because the inward journey is both exoteric and esoteric. There are many things that are visible on the surface, like initiation, you see, this is exoteric. But what happens in initiation and thereafter is esoteric and that we cannot see. So Buddha had many masters, many enlightened ones around him, but the key can be given only to such a person who can become a master in his own right and be able to help the others. The key is to be delivered on and on on a continuous basis. This has to be kept alive. It was not given to become a treasure for Mahakasya. It is like something you give it to the person and he hides it in his treasure box and when you are looking for that, it is not available. The key is a great responsibility. It has to be given to somebody. There were other enlightened ones as well, but the key could not be given to them. The key would be lost with them. That is why Buddha chose Mahakasya. And that is the reason that the enlightenment of Mahakasya is most unique and it is the epitome. Really Buddha chose the right person because the key is still alive. Mahakasya did well. He could find another person who would transfer it to someone else. The question is to find the right person. Just enlightenment is not enough. Many more things are required. Because communication is an art. It requires complete command of the language, both esoteric and exoteric. How to establish a commune, how to establish a connection between the various latayas, various psychocentres within an individual so that the journey. First, the seed has to be planted within, then it has to be nourished and nurtured before it begins to burst and come onto the surface. So this is a very intricate process. 
the question is to find the right person mm -hmm. just enlightenment is not enough and remember not all enlightened persons can be masters mm -hmm. therefore a distinction has to be made Jains have a beautiful distinction they say there are two types of enlightened ones one enlightened one one type of the enlightened ones is known as kavli kavli comes from the word kavli kavli means liberation one who has attained to absolute aloneness attained to total liberation he has become perfect but he cannot be a master he cannot give this perfection something that has happened to him to somebody else he is not a master he cannot guide he himself has become an ultimate peak but whatsoever he knows he cannot transmit in any way and that has to be one of the greatest one of the qualities of the master and the master sees whether this particular khalifa has that quality or not whatever has give, happened to him whatever is given to him is he capable to transmit this on to others the other type of enlightened one is known as tirthanka one who becomes a vehicle for others he is enlightened but he is also a master with a certain art of communicating through words and communicating through silence both for exoteric the words have to be used and for esoteric the silence has to be used silence and the words go hand in hand one prepares you for the inwardly and the other takes you forward he can deliver the message others can be enlightened through him buddha said whatsoever can be said in words i have told you and that which cannot be said by words i give it to mahakashya and that was a beautiful incident one day buddha came to avant pindika park by shavasti in the company of the great monks he had a flower in his hand he looked at everyone and seeing buddha stand up with a flower many thoughts came to the minds of the people buddha observed all that mahakashyap was empty when the eyes caught one another mahakashyap looked at buddha and he simply smiled and in that smile it was an indication the entire message was given you will recall between the spouse many times words are needed just a gesture the movement of eyes is more than enough and the entire communication happens something like that because a master and a disciple they are like lovers the disciple must be able to understand the gestures of the master and should have the capacity to decipher those mahakashya was given that flower and it was simply a physical outward manifestation of what had happened in world view the key was given to mahakashya the flower was simply an indication an external one mahakashya was the master of silence through his silence he could teach others were masters of the words and through their words they could teach and carry on the work it was not so essential the world sat on the periphery mahakashyap was the master of silence through his silence he could teach others were master of words what buddha did had to be recorded and transferred from generation to generation and this process is still continuous there were other scholars like mudgalyam sariputra anand they could record everything that is a treasure buddha was really happy all should be recorded and not even a single word should be left because he knows that a single word may become enlightenment a process of enlightenment to someone else but the silence also had to be carried on 
Therefore, two traditions exist, the tradition of the scriptures and that of silence. Then many can become enlightened. And the moment they become enlightened, they become so silent, so content, that not even there remains a desire to help the others. But the Jain says that the Tirthankar is a person who has gathered some karma, that this is strange, this thing has to be fulfilled by conveying the message to others. It is not a very good thing. Karma is not a very good thing. In his past, he has gathered karmas to be a master. It is not good. Because something has to be done, something has to be completed, and he must do it. That is karma. The residue will be fulfilled. And he will be relieved completely. The desire to help others is still a desire. Compassion towards other is a still energy moving towards others. All desires have to disappear but one to help others. That too is a desire and unless that desire disappears, this man will have to come back. So a master is one who has become enlightened but one desire is left, the desire to help others to become enlightened. And this is not an obstruction in becoming enlightened. But still you will be attached to the body. Only one stream, one bridge is there. There were other enlightened ones, but the key could not be given to him. It has been given to Mahakasya because he had an inner desire to help others because of his karmas. He could become a Tirthankar, a perfect master, and he did well. Buddha's choice was right because the other disciples, Subhuti, could have been given the key. He was as silent as Mahakasya and even more. It will be difficult for you to understand how silence and perfections can be more, but it is possible. It is beyond ordinary math arithmetic. You can be perfect and you can be even is still more perfect because perfection has growth. It goes on growing infinitely. Subhati was the most silent man around Buddha, even more silent than Mahakasya. But the key could not be given to him. Because he was so silent, it will be difficult now. You are entering a very complex phenomenon. In the first place, he would not laugh. The key could not be given to him because he would not laugh. He was not there. He was so silent that he would not laugh. He was not there to contain or not to contain. Even if Buddha had called Subhuti come, he would not have come. Buddha would have to go to him. He has attained to the state of Masubhya. It is Related of Subhuti that one day he was sitting under a tree when suddenly out of season flowers started showering on him. So he opened his eyes to know what has happened. The tree was not in bloom. The season was not there. Then from where suddenly these millions of flowers started falling. He looked and he saw many deities all around above the tree in the sky dropping the flowers. He would not even ask the deities what was the matter. He closed his eyes again. Then those deities said to Subhuti, we are thanking you for the sermon that you have given us on emptiness. Sermon on emptiness? Subhuti murmured. But I have not said a single word and you say that you are thanking me for the sermon that I have given on emptiness. I have not spoken a single word. The deity said you have not spoken and we have not heard. That is the perfect sermon on emptiness. He was so empty that the whole cosmos felt it. The gods had to come to shower the flowers on him. 
This is how the Diamond Sutra happened. Subhati did not ask anything and Buddha gave this sermon and the entire and Ananda reported the entire uh, the scripture, the Diamond Sutra, Prajna Paramitta Sutra. Subhati was there. He was so silent as if he was not there. He was not even bothered why Buddha was sitting with the flower. Mahakashyap was not like others, but still in a way. He looked at Buddha. He felt the silence. He felt the absurdity. But there was no one who was free. Subhati must have been there somewhere sitting in the contemplation. There arose no idea why Buddha was sitting silently today. Why he was only looking at the flower, then there was no effort to contain it. Then there was no ex explosion. Subhati was there as if absolutely absent. He would not laugh and if Buddha had called, he would not have come. Buddha would have to go to him. And no one knows if the key had been given to him, he might have thrown it away. He was not a man meant to be Tirthankar. He was not a man meant to be a teacher or a master. He had no past karmas. He was perfect, just perfect. And whenever something is so perfect, it becomes useless. Remember, a man so perfect is useless because you cannot use him for any purpose. Mahakashya was not so perfect. Something was lacking and he could be used. So in that gap, the key could be put. The key was delivered to Mahakashyap because he could be relied upon to deliver it to someone else. Subhuti was not reliable. Perfection, when absolute, just disappears. It is not there in the world. You can shower flowers on it but you cannot use it. That is why many enlightened ones were there. Only one in particular, Mahakarsha, was chosen. He was the man who could be used for this great responsibility. This is strange. That is why I say ordinary arithmetic would not help because you will think the key should be given to the most perfect. But the most perfect will forget where he had put the key. The key should be given to the one who is almost perfect, just on the verge, where one disappears. And before he disappears, he had to hand, it, hand over the key to someone else. To the ignorant one, the key cannot be given either. To the most perfect, the key cannot be given either. Someone has to be found who is just on the boundary. One who is passing from this world of ignorance to the world of knowing, just on the boundary is needed. Therefore, he crosses the boundary. This time can be used and the key delivered. To find a successor is very difficult because the most perfect is useless. Mahakashyap was just near the door, fresh, entering into silence. Silence became celebration and he had a desire to help. That desire has been used, but Subhuti was impossible. He was the most Buddha-like. He was most perfect. But when something is Buddha-like, he is useless. He can give himself the secret key. Thus, there was no need to give it to him. Subhuti never made anyone a disciple. He lived in perfect emptiness and God had to soak him many times. And he never made a disciple, he never said anything to anyone. Everything was so perfect. Why bother? Why say anything? Master is fulfilling his past karmas. He has to fulfill them. Subhuti cannot be given the key he is Buddha-like. Many will be there who are like Sariputta. Only words can be given to him. Somebody has 
to be found with entering silence, celebrating and has been caught just like jumping into the ocean of feeling. You jump, you become one with it. Just like a drop merging in the ocean becomes one with it, but does not mean that you have known the whole ocean. The moment is total, the moment of dropping the ego. The moment ego eliminates, the moment of egolessness is total. It is complete. As far as you are concerned, it is perfect. But as far as the ocean is concerned, as far as the divine is concerned, it is just the beginning. And there will be no end to it. Enlightenment, therefore, has two shows. The first show is the beginning when drop merges into the ocean and becomes ocean-like, the fana stage. Emerging out of individual narrow shell of ego, you are merging into the totality of the existence. Now you are ocean. This is just the beginning. Then as your journey continues, the other show becomes visible to you first. And then you reach the other shore, the Baka. The other shore is when the ocean merges into the drop, the totality manifests magnanimity through the drop. This is the state, the two shores of enlightenment. And that's why I said Sufism is the bridge between Fana and Baka. Thus, the enlightenment of Mahakashyap is the most unique in you.